9-11 has a very different meaning in Japan. For them, it's the six-month anniversary of the devastating earthquake and nuclear disaster. In the initial weeks, many Japanese felt that they weren't getting accurate information. As our contributor in Tokyo reports, that's when social media stepped in. Here's Toshima Eida. So during those initial weeks, we were not able to learn from television uh, what, for instance, the worst case scenario would be uh, in terms of radiation hazard. That was when social media proved themselves to be very useful and independent sources of information. We've seen the emergence of a handful of social media journalists who are running from one news conference to another and going live independently on Ustream or Twitter. Also, uh, people who had access to radiation measuring devices started going live on their own, showing real-time radiation levels on social media channels. This was weeks or even months before Japanese authorities started providing similar data regarding radiation levels for the public. Doctors have also used social media effectively. A team of radiation therapists at Tokyo University Hospital created a Twitter account to provide their analysis of the Fukushima nuclear explosions and how they could affect people, especially small children. Their Twitter feed soon attracted more than 200,000 followers. At a time when authorities were struggling to locate thousands of missing people, a person finder website launched immediately after the quake was very useful. Information about more than 300,000 people was provided there by the public only in a matter of one week. Meanwhile, for people living outside of the quake-stricken areas, a Facebook site was launched to urge them to stop panic buying. But social media wasn't completely helpful. Some false rumors were also quickly spread on Twitter. One was about a toxic rain that went viral after an oil refinery east of Tokyo caught a fire right after the quake. Now, six months after the unprecedented disasters, social media is a critical part of the nation's recovery effort. Various groups are raising donations and recruiting volunteers via Twitter and other websites. Anti-nuclear protesters are also finding Twitter an indispensable tool to stay connected and united. There are also new attempts to use social media to deliver earthquake early warning alerts based on predictions from geological and other scientific signs. In Tokyo, I'm Toshi Maeda for Link Asia. That's a great report, Toshi. Now, as I recall, about a year after Hurricane Katrina in the United States, there's still about 280,000 people who hadn't returned home. What's the situation in Fukushima? Hundreds of thousands of people in northern Japan have lost their homes after the triple disaster of quake, tsunami, and nuclear meltdown. And more than 80,000 of them are still living in shelters, temporary housing, or uh, staying with their families or relatives or uh, friends. There are still nearly 7,000 evacuees who are literally sleeping on the floors of evacuation centers, such as public school gymnasiums uh, that have been uh, converted into shelters. The government was saying that it wanted the uh, shelters to be closed by the end of August, but that didn't happen. Uh, the government missed that deadline. However, social media is keeping attention on evacuees, uh, many of whom are old uh, and without family to take care of them, uh, with volunteers now tweeting about their day-to-day -day lives and reporting on what still needs to be done for them. Got it. Thanks, Toshi. Toshi Maeda is based in Tokyo. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.